JSON's not the best thing in the world. It works, but it doesn't work great. What if I told you there's yet another alternative? And no, it's not YAML. What if I told you that alternative was by Apple and they open sourced it for some reason? All of that by itself sounds really interesting. But what if I told you on top of all that, it's actually really cool. So much so that I kind of want to start using it as soon as I can. I did not expect this release to be as interesting as it was. So I can't wait to show you what I've learned as I dug in. So let's take a look at Pickle. Apple's new configuration-focused programming language. I like how they open with a configuration that is programmable, scalable, and safe. Configuration is the key here. This is focused on being good for configuring things. The first example here, bird.pickle. We have a name and a job, which is a nested thing. So this is a pickle file. The interesting thing about pickle is you're not actually expected to like use this exactly as is. You're expected to run this and export out the different things you might want, like JSON or a YAML file or a plist or a dot properties, which I didn't even know was still a thing. But if you need one of these specific formats, now you have a standard that will export all the different formats. It gets weirder though, because as I mentioned, can do a bit of programming in here. First off, they have integrated application config so that you can embed Pickle into other programming languages like Java, Kotlin, Swift, and even Go. And you can see what the resulting output looks like when you run Pickle to configure these types of things. Absolutely fascinating that they are generating code for these different languages based on a Pickle module. And if we keep going, you'll see they've built IDE integration, including Visual Studio Code, which is crazy to think that Apple is building plugins for VS Code. As far as I know, that's unprecedented. I never would have expected Apple to be building things for Microsoft's open source code editors. Apple and open source generally aren't things I associate much, but here we are. And as someone just pointed out in chat, they don't even support Xcode. What? That's hilarious. They support all these other things and not their own cursed madness. I, I hate Xcode so much that I've considered making a video about it for a while because it is such a shit show. But we'll talk about that another time because I want to show off more of the cool things going on here. Like in this example, where you can actually do logic, you can enforce that this int has to be greater than a thousand. And then when you assign it, you'll get an error. Yes, this is a config language that lets you encode logic to guard things. That's like Zod, just built in to the config language. Very, very interesting. It's clear Apple had like specific problems they were trying to solve here. Introducing Pickle, a programming language for configuration. We're delighted to announce the open source first release of Pickle, a programming language for producing configuration. When thinking about configuration, it's common to think of static languages like JSON, YAML, or property lists. While these languages have their own merits, they tend to fall short when configuration grows in complexity. For example, their lack of expressivity means that the code often gets repeated. Additionally, it can be easy to make configuration errors because these formats do not provide any validation of their own. As someone who's been working a bit more in Terraform lately, yes, absolutely the case. To address these shortcomings, sometimes formats get enhanced by ancillary tools that add specific logic. For example, perhaps there's a need to make code more dry. So a special property is introduced that understands how to resolve references and merge objects together. Alternatively, there's a need to guard against validation errors. So some new way is created to validate these configuration values against an expected type. Before long, these formats almost become programming languages, but ones that are hard to understand and hard to write. On the other end of the spectrum, a general purpose language might be used instead. Languages like Kotlin, Ruby, or JavaScript become the basis for DSLs that generate configuration data. While these languages are tremendously powerful, they can be awkward to use for describing configuration because they are not oriented around defining and validating data. Additionally, these DSLs tend to be tied to their own ecosystems. It's a hard sell to use a Kotlin DSL as the configuration layer for an application written in Go. It's a very fair point because you don't want to use Kotlin to define your configs in Go. We should invent a new standard, obviously. If you don't want to write your Go configs in Kotlin, clearly what we need is yet another standard. <laughs> this XKCD gets more and more relevant every day, I swear. Anyways, we create a pickle because we think that configuration is best expressed as a blend between a static language and a general purpose programming language. This is a bold statement to make, to say a blend of static languages and general purpose programming languages is the right thing for a config. And honestly, the more I think about it, I'm starting to agree. We want to take the best of both worlds, providing a language that is declarative and simple to read and write, but enhanced with the capabilities borrowed from general purpose languages. When writing pickle, you're able to use the language features you'd expect, like classes, functions, conditionals, and loops. You can build abstraction layers and share code by creating packages and publishing them. More, most importantly, you can use Pickle to meet many different types of configuration needs. It can be used to produce static configuration files in any format or be embedded as a library into another application runtime. We designed Pickle with three overarching goals. One, to provide safety by catching validation errors before deployment. Two, to scale from simple to complex use cases. And three, to be a joy to write with our best-in-class IDE integrations. This is actually an interesting set of goals. Very very interesting. Uh, more and more, I like this idea of validating in the config. That just saves so much trouble. 
So let's do their quick tour of Pickle. We created Pickle to have a familiar syntax for devs and to be easy to learn. That's why we've included features like classes, functions, loops, and type annotations. For example, here's a Pickle file, a module, that defines a configuration schema for an imaginary web app. They want us to know that this file defines types, not data, which is a common pattern in Pickle. Interesting to have the concept of a template in something meant to compete with JSON. Application.pickle. It's a module named application. It has a host name as a string, port, which is an int 16-bit, environment, which is an environment, so this has to be coming from something else would be my guess. Database a database, also probably coming from something else. Oh, look at that. They define them right below. Database is a class that has all of these properties. An environment is a type alias for one of these values. This is so interesting. It's a blend of a bunch of different things, but the result's actually really simple. I'm liking where this is going. Let's keep digging. Someone asked, isn't this kind of the same idea like T3 environment? Yes and no. T3 and V is very much tied to TypeScript environments and is only for validating environment variables. This is for validating things inside of, outside of, and around the idea of config. Like this would go much better with something like Terraform than T3 environment would. And here's how the configuration data might be defined. Now we have localhost.pickle. It amends the application file and then it sets all of these things. Really nice. And there's built-in read expressions for reading external resources. Actually, that's really nice, too, that you can read from the environment like that. Huh. Really interesting. It's easy to create variations of the same base by amending. For example, let's imagine we want to run four databases locally as sidecars. This uses a four generator to produce four variations, each of which amends the base DB and specifies a different port. So here is the for loop example that I was looking for. Import application.pickle, hidden db application.database is a new database with these properties. And we create the sidecars, which uses a for loop where we select all of the values in this list. A lazy way to do a for loop where you guarantee it's just these values, but we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. So for each of these, it's going to create a config for a database that is 6,000 plus the offset. So you'll have port 6,000, 6,001, 2, and 3 all as valid configs. If you want to understand this code, we can take a look at the JSON that gets exported. So if we export database password center, this is setting the password for the environment. Then we run the pickle evaluation code, tell it that we want JSON out. And now here's the JSON that we get. It's actually really nice as a, a language that does this and only this. Like this code is solid. This makes sense to me. And having this be a thing that can spit out whatever different format you need and validate in whatever language that you use. I'm digging it. I want to learn more about this validation because it's one of the most interesting parts. Configuration is about data, and data needs to be valid. In Pickle, validation is achieved by using type annotations, and type annotations can optionally have constraints defined on them. Here's an example that defines the following constraints. Age must be between 0 and 130, name must not be empty, and zip code must be a string with five digits. Hey, somebody will be older than 130 someday. You don't want this, you don't want your code to break because Brian Johnson was right. Let's be real. So let's take a look at the person pickle module. Name, string, not is empty. Is this a helper that they have built in? Interesting. Age is an int, which is between 0 and 130. Seems like this is syntax, is their like, core validation stuff. I'm sure there's a doc somewhere that lists all of these. So age is an int that is between these values, and zip code's a string that matches this regex. Of course regex is involved. I was wondering when we'd see the word regex. The only way you could possibly make YAML more cursed is adding regex to it, and they managed to do that. Anyways. A failing constraint causes an evaluation error. So if we make this Alessandra file where age is negative, We'll get an error when we try to evaluate it that says that there's a type constraint failing is between 0 and 30 violated by this value and it calls out the specific line it happened on nice good stuff constraints are arbitrary expressions this allows you to author types that can express any type of check that can be expressed in pickle here's a sample type that must be a string with an odd length and whose first letter matches the last letter interesting at least they got equals right Sharing packages. Pickle provides the ability to publish packages and to import them as dependencies in a project. So it's going to be PPM, Pickle Package Manager. This is nuts. This provides an easy way to share Pickle code that can be used in other projects. It's easy to create your own package and publish them as GitHub releases or to upload them anywhere you wish. It can be imported from the absolute URL. Look at that. They're learning all the right lessons from the things we got wrong in JavaScript and Node. This is actually really cool. This is like, I feel like they watched that one talk that Ryan Dahl did about the regrets he had from Node, and they applied all of those lessons really well here. I'm impressed. This is cool. Alternatively, they can be managed as dependencies of a project. Using a project allows Pickle to resolve version conflicts between different versions of the same dependency within a dependency graph. It also means that you can import packages by a simpler name. Huh, you can define dependencies like that. Hmm. Well, it is a JSON replacement, so they have to replace package JSON. Seems like they found a way to do that. 
version conflicts in my config files is a a meme I'm seeing in chat now that, yeah. Funny enough, not a lot of people know this. The package system for iOS, it's a thing called pods that were created by the community, not by Apple. And the creator of pods, Orta, actually kind of moved on from iOS and became one of the lead contributors for TypeScript at Microsoft, which was very interesting to see somebody who made packages possible in the iOS world, hate it so much he moved over to JavaScript and TypeScript. They don't call the pickle package manager the pickle jar, they're doing it wrong. That's fair. It looks like they even have their own set of packages that they're managing, which is interesting because this means Apple's probably using these technologies in order to justify the time they're putting in, which means Apple's officially almost certainly using Kubernetes because they built the Kubernetes binding. Very interesting. They also called the mono repo for publishing many of them the pantry, the pickle pantry. I'll give that a star. It's 28 stars for those wondering. And the actual pickle language, is a 3K. I'll give that a star too. This is fascinating. It's also just crazy. The rare times you see Apple popping up in the open source world. One of my favorite examples of this, there's this weird Apple account and we have confirmed this is officially Apple, the developer ecosystem engineering account on GitHub. Previously, it had a really ominous profile picture. Tell me that's not one of the most ominous profile pictures you've seen on a GitHub account that turned out to actually be Apple's GitHub account. It seems like Apple doesn't want the engineers who are contributing these things to be like using their usernames on their own accounts. It's very Apple to do this from like the shadows, so to speak. It's eerie almost. Also, it wasn't originally this poorly alias. This is just the very low quality backup that uh, archive.org has. Huge shout out to them for keeping most of the internet alive. So I remember when I first saw this account file a pull request on OBS, rewriting the layer for window capture on Mac. This was really cool. The reason they did this seemed to be that they were testing their new capture solutions and they used OBS as like a standard for capture. So having Apple out of nowhere show up and contribute really nice changes to OBS was really unexpected and cool. And they did a huge breakdown because it's Apple. Here's where they call out the language bindings, which is really interesting because they want it to be embeddable in other languages. Apple generally doesn't like JavaScript and I am certain they don't like TypeScript much, so I'm not surprised we don't see those here. But of course they had to support Swift because it's Apple. But it's interesting, they also support Go, Java, and Kotlin, especially Kotlin. When I think about it, Apple does have quite a few Android apps now, like the Android Apple Music apps, one of the best apps on Android. It makes sense they have to think about Kotlin a bit more, especially if they're already using Java for their stuff. It, that makes sense. Using code generation is just one of the many ways to embed Pickle within an application. Our language bindings also provide evaluator APIs to control Pickle evaluation at low level, and users are free to interact with Pickle at the abstraction level that makes the most sense for their application. Now the last big piece is the editor support. We believe that a programming language is only as good as the experience of writing it. That's why we aim to provide best in class editor support. When writing Pickle in an editor, users are guided through the process of filling in configuration data from a given template. Additionally, the editors provide instant feedback if any values are invalid. Documentation is immediately available when called upon. We're also releasing the IntelliJ plugin, which provides rich support for JetBrains editors, including IntelliJ, WebStorm, Goland, and PyCharm. These plugins are able to analyze a Pickle program and provide features like autocomplete, go to definition, and refactoring support. That's really cool that they're doing language servers properly. That's nuts. To have a, like a config file, like imagine if your JSON autocompleted and gave you errors when you were editing it. This is actually one of my favorite parts. Okay, when are we replacing package JSON with package pickle? Because I need this type of safety in everything I do. This is great. Seriously though, imagine like an alternative to something like Next, where the Next config JSON wasn't a JSON, it was a pickle file. And when you went to your editor and started typing out the config, it would error if you got things wrong. That sounds awesome. This seems genuinely really cool. Right now, when we want to do stuff like this, we end up doing crazy hacks, like putting our config files in the language we're using, like TypeScript, so that we can get type errors. And now we have to compile that in order to use it. This skirts so much of that. It's actually really cool. Sadly, the VS Code plugin doesn't seem to have the erroring yet, just the syntax highlighting and cold folding, but they are planning on doing that in the future. Really nice to see. They have examples here for a bunch of different things from Kubernetes to Swift to the JVM and Go. Really good stuff. This is both further along and better than I would have expected. I did not expect this to be this cool, honestly, and I'm genuinely really hyped. I certainly didn't expect Apple to make something like this, much less open source it. So I'm really hyped to see the results. What about you? Are you excited too? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, thank you again for watching. Peace nerds.